from Athens, Ohio, Rambler, with Vassar Clements and the Vassar Clements Band. We appreciate you letting us come here and be with you tonight, and I hope you have a good time because we are up here, and maybe we'll do some things that you like. Before I forget about it and forget their names, I'll tell you who everybody is, and then we'll get on with the music. Guy on my right over here from North Carolina on guitar is Jim Tipton. He's got a growth on there. And uh, formerly with the New York Yankees, no, from the state of Kentucky back here on drums is Rick Ward. And from the state of shock, Atlanta, GA, <laughs> Corky McMillan on bass. And everybody should have their own Pollock with them. Don't get me wrong, I love Pollocks. That's the reason I got ours over here. Steve Davidoski on keyboards. And we're gonna do a kind of a new tune here. It's called Handcuffed to a Heartache. No escape the day breaks, shackled to a love that didn't last. There'd be no promise for tomorrow, freedom from my sorrow, as long as I'm a prisoner of the past. Got to find the way around your memory, if it takes until the end of time. It's just from the past, keep coming down on me, and I'm climbing up the walls inside my mind. Heartache, no escape for daybreak, shackled to a love that didn't last. There'd be no promise for tomorrow, freedom from my sorrow, as long as I'm a prisoner of the past. Find a way around the memory Maybe I can learn to love again Pictures from the past keep coming down on me And I'm right back where I started from again Handcuffed to a heartache No escape a day break Shackled to a love that didn't last There'd be no promise for tomorrow Freedom from my sorrow As long as I'm a prisoner of the past Heartache, no escape of daybreak, shackled to a love that did last. There'd be no promise for tomorrow, freedom from my sorrow, as long as I'm a prisoner of the past. My path up to a heartache, no escape of daybreak, shackled to a love that did last. There'd be no promise for tomorrow, freedom from my sorrow, as long as I'm a prisoner of the past. Now, as long as I'm there, a prisoner of the past. Thank you. Here's one most of you are familiar with. Uh, I don't know about the name of it, but most of it says, How Does It Go?
Thank you. Here's one a little bit slower. This is one Corky wrote called Silver Eagle. It's all about these buses and on the road. <clears throat> Down the highway, riding your shiny wings across the USA. All the comforts that we could ask for, still it's a comfort to leave it for the stage. It hasn't been too long ago, the only way to make the show was crowded in the back of some old Down the highway, riding your shiny wings across the USA. All the comforts that we could ask for, still it's a comfort to leave it for the stage. Has got a man just driving into him, wanting that you can trust when you sleep. Now we've had good and we've had bad, and I must say I'm mighty glad that ones didn't let me sleep too deep. Silver Eagle, take us down the highway, ride in your shiny wings across the USA. first got started, uh, I guess when I was about seven years old, and I learned to play on, well, actually barred instruments up till I went to work with Bill Monroe, which was in 1949. Uh, well, there's a girl that I knew that was working at the telephone company, and she was a long distance operator, and she listened in on one of these calls because he said his name was Bill Monroe, and he was calling start florida looking for a fiddle player so she comes and tells me about it and that's all i had to go on before i went to nashville i bought a fiddle from a guy selling vegetables for three dollars i believe or two dollars a half and uh when i went to catch the bus in jacksonville florida to go to nashville i left it in this restaurant you know i was going i, I can't remember where i was going anyway when i came back I had about 10 minutes to catch the bus, and the guy said, it, you know, he couldn't find it. There was a, a different guy behind the counter. So I couldn't wait on the fiddle, you know. I had to catch the bus. So I went to Nashville without a fiddle. Well, all my life I've known that what I wanted to do and what I was gonna do if I had to set the house and do it. But uh, it's not all that easy, no. Uh, it's impossible to explain the headaches in between. Uh, but I will say this, a person can get so depressed that, that they think that they'll never be able to do what they want to do. You just have to be able not to give up. You just, 
just don't let anything else uh, come over it, you know. Uh, it was Bill Monroe off and on for a long time, and then, you know, I quit the last two years of, of, uh, of high school and uh, went to school all the time, you know, because, well, football, that was right up with music, you know. I just love football. I played, well, on that team there, I played every position, but I wound up in uh, a halfback position. And uh, then I got the scholarship to go to Georgia Tech, and uh, my mother didn't want me to play football, so I did what she wanted me to do. Well, I didn't play football, but I did play music. Ooh, we starting off fast. Here's one that uh, our bass player Corky wrote. It's called Every Song I Hear. You're a boogie too And if 
that makes me start to think of you I don't know how that I could do it How that I could live without you Play me a love song combos and uh, big bands uh, in Florida, where I was from, you heard, you didn't hear any string instruments. Nobody hardly played any string instruments. Now they just flowing out of there. You know? But back then, uh, it was all uh, horns, you know, and, and combos and big bands. So I guess when I was, you know, when I started learning, I was trying to make one instrument sound like a whole band, which is impossible. But it's a good idea. You know, it keeps you doing things that you're not supposed to do, that they don't think you can do. So uh, I would try to make a fiddle sound like two or three pieces. And now I feel like I was lucky by doing that, you know. Uh, I used Monroe's fiddle for a long time, you know, until I could buy me one. And uh, actually, the most I had ever paid for a fiddle up till just a few years ago was like $10. And uh, 
I went on with these different fiddles, you know. And in fact, I've still got the one that I paid ten dollars for. It's one of the best fiddles I ever had. And I went on up until the one I've got now, which uh, John Harford gave to me. I guess the greatest experience of my life, you know. I mean, because I couldn't imagine the ultimate to me was going to the Grand Ole Opry. And to help that ultimate was playing with Bill Monroe on the Grand Ole Opry. That was just uh, the only thing I had in my mind. Nobody else, you know, mattered. It was just Bill Munro. Uh, the first night I went out on the Grand Ole Opry stage, I knew there was so many people listening, you know, my friends in Florida and everything, you know, and it's a heck of a feeling. And I was so scared that uh, if I hadn't got an encore, I couldn't have moved anyway. But I was, I'm glad I got one. They almost had to carry me off of it. Oh, we're going to get that. We have to get that before we get through. But uh, we save that to the last, because after that, we might as well put it up. Uh, this is about three tunes in a row, all about Dixie, or things of that nature, or something like that. With a horn. sun really shine all the time. Sweet magnolia blossom round everybody's door. Big sheep, big blossom till they can't eat no more. If it's true what they say about Swanee, is it green by that stream so sublime? They laugh to me up like they do in every song. They do, that's where I belong. Step watch you see. One legged Joe hopping round on his toe. Put away his king and hollered, hey, let her go. Hell, hell, the gang's all here for the Alabama Halfway to heaven, rain is falling, but still I can see fields of cotton that beckon to me. My window faces the south, and though I'm far from the Swanee, I'm never lonelier down in the mouth. My window faces the south. Does the sun really shine all the time? Sweet magnolia blossom round everybody's door. Go keep the possum till they can't eat no more. Is it true what they say about swine? Is it green by the stream so sublime? Do they laugh do they love like they do in every song?
is uh, one that's a little bit different. This is a Miles Davis tune <laughs> called Move. <laughs> I've been singing with other people, you know, quite a while, but not by myself. It's been, uh, when I had to, which was on the first Mercury album, I believe. I tried to sing one, I believe, one or two. And uh, I've been getting into it a little bit more. That kind of unnerves me, that and talking. You know, as far as talking, telling people, I, I can tell them what we're going to play, but as far as uh, telling jokes and things like that and carrying on, I can't think of nothing to say. I can go out there and, uh, you know, I've learned to say that I don't have to say very much except what we're going to play, and a lot of times I don't have to do that, so it's got a lot easier. But uh, the singing, that's the same way, you know. If I know I've got a song coming up in about two or three numbers, that's what I'm thinking about. People would say that, uh, you know, you don't, you don't need to talk. Just, you know, everything you've got to say comes through when you're playing. I don't really understand that because I'm not out there listening. But there must be something to it because there's been so many people says that. And there's no message, really. I'm wanting them to like it, you know, and I'm playing everything that's in me. Uh, it'd be hard to say what kind of message that is. Your mood has a lot to do with it. Some nights that, uh, I don't know, I just feel real blue, real blue or something, you know, just kind of down. And I don't want to play fast at all. If I had to play a fast tune, it really works me. And other nights, I don't want to play nothing slow. So it's just the way you feel. Nobody ever knows how a tune's gonna come out. It's just how you feel. Uh, I have no earthly idea of what, what's gonna happen. 
You know, we've played the tune maybe a hundred times, but you never know what it's going to sound like this next night. Because I know I'm going to do it different. Here's another one that's on uh, the last time we got out. It's an old Hank Williams tune called There Be No Teardrops Tonight. from sorrow Make believe that wrong is right Your wedding day will be tomorrow But there'll be no teardrops tonight Why, oh, why did you desert me? Are you If you only want to hurt me, then there'll be no teardrops tonight. I don't want to just stay in the studio all the time because uh, that would just uh, get old. And I want to see people, you know, and this is the only way to do it. I just don't like riding, you know, so I got a lot against that. But a plane's no better because you got to get up before daylight to catch one of them, you know. A lot of times they'll cancel out when you got to go. So the bus is the best way, I guess. You, your instrument's safe and everything. I was thinking about getting off the road, you know, and just staying there and recording and, uh, and having a, a little route to run, you know, just to, just to keep going. And uh, people started calling Millie, you know, want me to go out. She said, well, I'll fix that. I'll just stick a price on it, you know, that they won't take. And so she stuck one on there and they said, good. Quite a few years ago, you know, they started, uh, or so I heard that they were uh, teaching, you know, in colleges and places, you know, where music came from and uh, the different types of music and things. Well, at that time, I didn't know they were, you know, anything was happening. And come to find out that actually people had known me 
especially the, the younger people, uh, from back in the Monroe days, you know. In fact, they knew what kind of instrument I played. They knew more about it just about than I did. And it was really surprising. I guess my biggest thing I've always wanted to do was satisfy people. If I couldn't do that, everything would just be disaster for me. But if I can do that and see the look on their faces, you know, uh, that's great. I know I've accomplished something. Some audiences are real hard, but if they, the kind that's real hard, if we're playing a certain type of music, we'll change, play something else. Before we get through, nine times out of 10, they'll be moving. The college people are great. They're the greatest I've ever played to. Because you can do anything you want to. When you're playing something that you feel yourself, you know it's hard for you to play, and you're playing your heart out, they understand it. If they don't understand it, you'll never know it because, well, I think they understand it because at certain times they'll even give you a hand, you know, when uh, that's exactly the right place you're doing you know, the things that you can do, the hardest. And it seems like they know. They're really into it a lot more. Physically, you're not tired, but mentally, it makes you tired all over anyway. And, but, it, but you don't realize it till you get through. And I immediately go to bed. Well, I always look forward to going to Lone Star. It's great people real receptive you'll see you know i mean it's just it's like going back home we're up here about every month anyway Oh, 
water and some food to buy you a boat. Climb to the top and be warm by your welcome. Someone to weave you a coat. Show them you can soar as high as an eagle and some fool off you win. Let fame spray your name in the sky full of stars and just see how the pendulum swings. Yeah, everybody loves a winner, but you're alone when the chips are down. Then you find yourself surrounded by fair weather friends when your luck comes back around. Show to the world you can swim like a dolphin and some fool to throw your line. Tell them the truth, they'll label your profit and say you're ahead of your time. Sing with a voice like a choir of angels and they say you have a golden throat. Through to the world you can walk on water and some fool will buy your boat. got to have it and uh, in order to have rhythm you got to have drums and if you got drums you got to have electric instruments because you can't hear yourself if you don't I play with whatever's around me if it's uh, uh, I just uh, get into what's what I hear around me it's like this is the first time I've ever played and this is all I hear that sounds crazy let's see is there another way to put that? No, it's not either. If I was playing with uh, Tommy Dorsey or Harry James or anybody else, uh, Woody Herman, it would still be the same way because I, just what I heard around me, that's, that's what's happening. Uh, I can hear uh, harmony parts and things that's not really the way, according to Hall, the way they're supposed to be, but yet it works. It, it fits. I still remember the the four-part harmony things, you know, that uh, the, what was it, the Letterman and people like that used to do, and the Modern Ears with Glenn Miller, and they had this odd four-part harmony It's still in the back of my mind. I hear these things. There's so much on four strings and a short neck that you wouldn't believe, nobody. If there's any kind of sound on there that you can think of. If you've got it in your mind, you can make it on that fiddle. When I first started with John Hartford, we started playing the college circuit. And, of course, he let me play like I wanted to play, you know, and that was a big help. Because the other times, I did very little that I, I really wanted to do, you know. They either wanted me to play like somebody else before, and then after, we would work up to all the tunes that they had done before. I still kind of had to stay in that style, and it wasn't the way I really wanted it. But Hartford just turned me loose, you know, said, play like you want to. And so uh, that was when it started, really. And then uh, the Circle album, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? I think really did it, you know. It was just uh, a week of recording for me, and uh, a lot of fun. I had no earthly, I, I didn't have any idea it would go as far as it did. Because, well, I knew all these people in Nashville, you know, I just hadn't sat down and recorded with them like that. And it was, uh, that was another challenge because it was, each person would do, I think it was two numbers a piece, or four, I can't remember two, I believe. 
and then they would change and somebody else would come in. So I played with all of them except Merle Travis, and I, I wasn't in town then. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Bill McEwen, I guess he's, uh, he's the brains behind it. And uh, he did a one-time thing, I think, that could never be repeated. And that album is still selling, you know, just like it did way back then. I think it's going platinum. Thank you very much. Uh, I asked you to sing on two of them a while ago. You might not have known the words to them, but I'm going to ask you one more time. You know the words to this. It's called, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Sing loud so I can hear you. <laughs>
Chubby Wise. This is a co-writer on uh, Orange Blossom Special. Him and Irvin Ralph wrote Orange Blossom Special. Every night that I play, first thing they're going to say when you go in and get on stage, Orange Blossom Special. And I just say, okay, wait till the last tune. Oh, Orange Blossom Special is uh, Fiddle Players National Anthem. People get to stomping their feet to it, you know, and things. There's not that much really to it. Uh, you can keep adding things, you know, that don't have anything to do with Orange Blossom Special, but nobody knows the difference. You know, you just... Uh, I used to listen to cartoons on Saturday morning to get tunes, you know, to put, put in the middle of it. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. And we'll do it again. Thank you, time real quick, I hope. Before we go, thanks once again for coming out and being with us. And hopefully we'll see you again real soon around these parts somewhere. And we're going to do the Fiddle Players and National Anthem before we leave. It's uh, the Orange Blossom Special.
We're building our own studio. And that's going to help, oh, 100%, because I can record then when I feel, feel like it's, you know, a person has times like that, especially when they play by ear, you know. There is times that you can't do any wrong, and there's times that you don't feel like it, that you have to go in, you know, when you're doing other things. That you do the bare minimum, because that's all you feel like doing, and you can't do anything if you can't think right. And so having the studio will make uh, a lot of difference to me, because if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, I can go in there. If that studio gets put up, and somebody will put it out, there's going to be music there. <laughs> Because we're going to do a lot of plays. Yeah, everybody loves a winner. But you can win when you do your best. After 20 years of sweat and tears, you're an overnight success. Prove to the world you can walk on water. Some fool will buy your boat. Climb to the top, be warm by your wealth. There's someone to weave your coat. Sing with a voice like a choir of angels. And they say you have a golden throat. Walk on water And some fool will buy your boat Yeah, some fool will buy your boat 